We're live. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hi. I am Natalie. For those, I think everyone knows me by now, but you never know. My name is Natalie Vartanian. I've um, been with CORE for five years now. I'm the community engagement manager, and this is... Hi, everyone. I'm Jen, and I am like the resident writer at CORE and a CORE coach. Um, an event manager, so I have lots of different roles I play here. Mm -hmm. That's true. And today we wanted to get on and talk about Nobleman, specifically around female staffing, um, mm -hmm. because we have one coming up, and it is one of the most amazing things to do in relationship with men as a woman, like yeah. to staff. Yeah, absolutely. So we have a Nobleman coming up, uh, just like what three weeks ish from now and we actually have a lot of female spots and so we wanted to come in and share why you might want to staff no man because no man is really so much more than just giving to the men um, that's it's that too right like it's that's awesome but I usually go for me honestly <laughs> well for those of you that haven't staffed at core you might not know this, but staffing is just as much of an experience, like your mm -hmm. own kind of like your own workshop, as much as it is giving to the participants of the workshop. And so it's very true. Like there's so much that we get personally from staffing um, as the participants do. Yeah, absolutely. So we thought we'd come on and just share some of the things that we have gotten in the past from staffing no man's. Um, this is actually my 10th staffing uh, of a nobleman. Of is, nobleman. Of no, just, oh. no, 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 not like of everything. <laughs> just like of nobleman. Like this is my 10th oh nobleman. Um, yeah. She loves it. So that's, that's how much I love it. It's, it's amazing. Um, and it has honestly completely changed the way that I look at men, but also the ways in which I am aware of my own strategies and like, um, like the things that I do in relationship with men. Well, and, and what she means by that is like strategies that she didn't even know she had mm -hmm. before the workshop and before being given an opportunity to see it because you're faced with it, right? As you're staffing, you're interacting with men one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. So we're encouraged as staff to look at what are our strategies what are the things we normally do what does our survival survivor self do what is the wounded part of us feeling right in these yeah. relationships and so these blind spots things that you never would have seen or known beforehand start coming to the light yeah so we thought the first thing that we would do is just like call out some of our own strategies that we have learned <laughs> well, <Stabby Nolan. laughs> <laughs> I thought you were just gonna do it. No, I will too. I will too. No, you're gonna do no, it. No, I know. I'll do it too. <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> so, um, one of mine, one of the first that I noticed was um, the ways in which I try and get attention from men. Mm -hmm. um, oftentimes, I notice that I get very like fidgety with my clothing and my hair and my makeup, like, I'll go back. I was laughing earlier with Natalie. I was like, yeah, I like checked myself in the mirror for the 15th time. And no, I don't look any different than I did 60 seconds ago. <laughs> like totally ridiculous things that are, they almost feel like nervous ticks, like things that I don't, sometimes I'm unconscious of, or like, I don't totally feel like I have control yeah. over. And um, I got to really look at the, the ways in which I'm doing that to try and get attention from men through the ways that I know how to get attention from men, which is physically, mm -hmm. honestly, right? Um, and so it was really cool. I think it was actually just my last old man to notice that I was doing that and then to walk up to one of the male staff members before it was before initiations. Um, and you, like, you guys know, right? Like, we're all, like, dressed up, and we're, like, nervous. Um, but I walked up to one of the male staff members, and I was like, hey, would you be willing to tell me that I look beautiful right now? And it was so nice to just receive that and, like, watch that need for attention 
just get met in a really healthy way um, and to interrupt that pattern that I have. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that makes me think of how, for me, it's kind of the opposite where I become like a wallflower around men. I, I want to be small and visible in some ways. Like I don't, unless I know where the attention is coming from, you know, I'm very curious about how, I don't know, the like intentions and motivations of men. And so mm -hmm. like, I kind of feel myself going into a little bit, oh, Adam Gopin, we love you too. <laughs> um, so I kind of go into this like retreating thing and, um, and not, yeah, not wanting to have any of my kind of energy out there because um, I don't want the attention or the spotlight mm, in some ways. Yeah. And, and hiding. I, hiding, like the hiding mm -hmm. is so, oh, it's, yeah, just like this, how can I have an invisibility cloak right now and not, yeah. <laughs> not have to? And then I've, I've seen how it works even then that extension into relationships where I won't address things, right? I won't, mm -hmm. if something's bothering me, I won't say anything. I just will, again, kind of, be small, don't take up space, don't like share any grievances around anything. And, um, and I do have to say like, after Safi Nobleman, I had a recent experience around a situation where I was in conversation with someone that I'm dating and I was so annoyed with something that he was doing and he called it out the first time. He was yeah. like, oh, I'm sorry. I, I'm like, okay things you know and we're still talking yeah. he does it again and I was just like <laughs> so, <laughs> so mad and I just breathed and again old Natalie pre like staffing and getting these mm -hmm. nuances about myself would have kept quiet and gotten resentful and you know and then it would have like slowly sabotaged yeah the connection and the relationship right. totally and and I realized I was caretaking. I didn't want to bring it up because I'm like, oh, I don't want to make him upset. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, I'm taking care of him more than my feelings. Right. He can't handle it. He can't handle it. Mm -hmm. Then he's going to have a fit and I'm going to take care of him, yeah. you know, and his yeah. emotions, like emotional labor. And, but I said something. I was like, that really upset me. I'm trying to talk here, you know, <laughs> Like, I don't like it when you do that. When I'm talking and he caught himself, he apologized, right? Yeah. He breathed and then, but I still was upset. And and he said, do you need a moment? I was like, yeah, I need a moment. I'm still mad. <laughs> yeah. And I kind of like threw a fit and got over it. And so again, it was like this, don't hide. But then this other thing around the caretaking, like oh my the God, strategy. So Right. So much so, right? Like we all have this, we have the saying at core, right? To be like there with them, but not for them. Right. So I love the analogy of the tennis court. Like it's like they hit the ball, we can hit it back, but like you can't run over and try to hit the ball for them, right? <laughs> like um or go and like give them lessons like, so right. that you know like let me you show you how to do this yeah. the correct way, right? Like so that you can be better, like that we <laughs> We don't ever do that with men, right? No way. <laughs> um, so, like, to really get to practice that, like, in an embodied way and be like, we're not caretaking them. Like, yes. they get to be, they get to have their experience. They get to do whatever there's that's going to happen, whatever they're going to do. Yes. And we just get to witness it without, like, a, like affecting it in, like, a purposeful or even I would even stretch to say like sometimes manipulative way, right? That we can do. Right. Yeah. Well, and that, that, I mean, that was a game changer for me, the learning, the being with men, not for them, because it was this, oh, how do you just be shoulder to shoulder? Right. And in mm -hmm. that sense, it's our healthy self coming up and being present with them. Yeah. And it inspires their healthy self to come online. But if, we're trying to caretake and we're, you know, those like, again, strategies, that's mm -hmm. our survivor. And so of course it's going to then create this weird reaction over there. Cause they're like, what are you doing? You know, even though yeah. it might look on the surface, like it's healthy, it's not because the intentions are not healthy ones, you yeah, know, totally. it's to create 
a result that you want, right? Not to soothe you and your insecurity. And, mm -hmm. and so that's, that's that place where we get to see lovingly what our survivor strategies are with men and then learn, really learn the tools and then practice them all weekend yep. to be in our healthy self with men and see how that inspires them. Mm -hmm. The participants, you see them as they show up. Yeah. Right, we can be an influence with men, but when we're coming from our healthy selves, right, around it. like a positive influence yes. rather than like kind of purposely attempting to change a situation. Yes. Um, I love that, I think that that's really important that like ability to just practice that and practice yes. staying within yourself and your own experience rather than constantly attempting to like shift outward right mm -hmm. which we all which I, we all do at some point oh yeah which is also an a plug for those of you to come back in staff yes you know if you have staffed already ten come times. back ten, ten times ten, ten times it's ridiculous every time you learn something new every time you there's this deeper cut in the learning and again mm -hmm. because their muscles for women historically that are not strong yeah that's what i find it's like at first, the idea of like not caretaking, I'm like, are you kidding me? That's like cutting off my lifeline, yeah. you know? Like, I'm, I'm a caretaker, you know? Yeah. And the identity is so strong, right? So to have the multiple opportunities to slough off those things that we've learned yeah, and come back into who I am and how I want to show up and then really practice and be strong in that muscle of like boundaries and you know, res responsibility, responsibility mm -hmm. over there, you know, and just kind of how do I do this dance with men? It's definitely a game changer. Like I, um, I know a lot of you guys saw my post in here last week about my partner coming to this nobleman. Um, and I can tell you right now that the only reason that I am still in that partnership is all the times that I have staffed nobleman. <laughs> like, like the number of times is he just pushes a lot of my buttons in really wonderful, amazing ways. And, and the number of times that I've had to be like, Oh, there's my trigger. There's my strategy. There's my feelings about this that don't even like match the reality of the situation. Like you did something sweet again and I'm irritated. Like oh, that doesn't seem to match the data. Like what's going on? There? <laughs> <laughs> that must be mine. <laughs> cool like you know like this like this ability to kind of consistently come back to me and check in with how do I feel what's going on for me what's happening um it's really like I guarantee you that I would have made this all like I would have been like all the judgments like that's definitely one of my strategies is lots of judgments and I would have just been like nope XYZ reasons why this man is not the right one for me and he does this and he does this and I'm out um, probably around week two yeah which is another strategy of mine right that I got to be aware of from all the staffings of nobleman um, well oh man and the judgments and the expectations and the stereotypes that we have around mm -hmm. men they are Whew. in your face highlighted because you're seeing them and how beautiful that we get to see it because it's like mm -hmm. there's this way that we judge men in for the very same thing that we are pissed about them judging us for. Oh, for sure. You know? <laughs> there was definitely, I remember one particular noble man where there was a very attractive uh, man there and all of us, there was like five of us in a room um, of female staff and we were, like all noticing that we were confronted with like our judgments of him as a person, even though we hadn't interacted with him at all or um, simply because of his looks, right? Like we were like, oh, he must think that he's too good for us. Like, oh, he must be closed off. Oh, he must be this. Oh, he must be that. And, and that wasn't the case at all. Like, and that's what we were like, wow, that was really different than we expected. And that happens a lot, right? So men come in the first opening circle and you're like, oh, that one is scary. That one has big walls. That one might cry. Like, you're like you kind of have this like, <laughs> I'm going to make all these guesses like your minds. Like, what's going to happen? What's oh, yeah. Gonna happen? Story what's gonna time. Happen? It's like story oh time. God. Oh, my God. Story right? time. <laughs> totally. And then 
to, it's such a gift too to watch the ways in which they show up differently than we expect and how that and then to watch our own stories and how that can and how uncomfortable even that we can be with those stories breaking mm -hmm. um of like what men should do and what they shouldn't do and mm -hmm. um it's really just like it's a never-ending powerful experience like i have like i said this is my 10th time i learn something new every time i have an absolutely unbelievably beautiful memory from every single one um a lot of you said that you were really touched by the one that i shared on the post from last week about some of our favorite memories i have one like that from every single nobleman that i have been to they've all been beautiful they've all given me such gifts not just in my awareness but like in really beautiful profound amazing embodied experiences too that like i'll never yeah. forget well because we i know we've been talking a lot about our own experience or what we get as staff and there's this huge component of you're witnessing men you're mm -hmm. witnessing the men that are saying yes to doing the work you're witnessing them you're mm -hmm. seeing it you're a fly on the wall you get to hear about men's experience in a way you never would because mm -hmm. it's real it's vulnerable it's intimate and and you get to be a part of their healing. I mean, what beautiful sacred work is that to just kind of, you know, they're there, they're willing, they're able, and we are the ones that are kind of like the wind beneath their wings yeah. as they're transforming. Totally. And so just that alone is worth five times the like money, time, investment, yeah. resources, whatever. It changes everything, and it really is just like, it's such a gift. And the last thing that I want to say too is it's such a beautiful experience on the back end, especially for those of you who haven't come to staff yet. Um, mm. It's not all work. <laughs> it's absolutely not all work. It's so fun to sit in both the sisterhood and also the brotherhood. Like the, we have 10 men coming to staff this nobleman and they are so I'm like every time i'm just like blown away by how much they give they actually do a lot a lot like we you just kind of show lot. up and they've like done everything half the time i feel like and and they just do such a good job at like really like holding us and being at our backs and taking care of us and you get to lean into that as well and have this experience of mm, yeah. of like I don't know for me it's like a family like hanging out at the house afterwards and being you know connected with all of the staff and it, it's it's just like so special it's so unbelievably special what we receive and so nuanced and layered well yeah i want to just kind of emphasize that just to give you a visual picture the way it looks is the men male participants and facilitators are on the inside circle female staff is on the outside circle and then there's the male staff that have come back, have done the nobleman and come back, and they're on the like last tier. And so it is this beautiful way that we're giving and receiving, and we're giving to the men, we're get receiving, we're receiving from the male staff. There's yeah. the staff leaders that are guiding us and giving to us. Mm -hmm. And you know, you're so held as staff. So please, please, please come join us. Like I will be there, Jen will yes. be there. Rita will be there. Yes. <laughs> Rita's in the background saying yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. We cannot wait yes. for this weekend. Um, so please come join us. Yes. So we have a special offer for yes. those of you who are interested in coming to Staff Noble Moon. Yes. So we would love to offer you $50 off registration. Um, and also uh, an hour coaching session with either Jen or myself. So you get to choose. So you get a great like two to three hundred dollar value on yeah. top of this beautiful weekend. So then you on the black side you'll have one of us to talk to mm -hmm. um, about your experience and learn and grow. And so please come. Um, I will put the information in the comments as well. Yeah. And if you have any questions, reach out to either Jen or myself. Um, and we would love to see you there. Yeah, absolutely. And that coaching call can be used if you are 
a little nervous about your That's ability true. to hold space or what like might be in store for you, you can use it before. Or on the front end. Yeah. Yes. Oh my gosh. Right. Yes. You can definitely. absolutely use it before or you can use it after the weekend as a way to integrate your experience. Mm -hmm. Um, not to totally toot our own horns, but like an hour with us is a lot in terms of like integration ability or yes. getting to see, getting to really like witness yourself and getting to a healthier grounded place. Um, whether it's before or after that will really help you grow your awareness and um, feel more grounded in the experience. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Huge value. Um, and we would appreciate the gift of your presence at that weekend. Yes, please. Also just come play with us. It's lots of fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My seven wings like, but we have fun too. I know. So much fun. It's literally so much fun. It's so much fun. It's so much fun. All the dance parties. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's so much fun. And then just to be able to witness the initiations, and oh my god. Hang out with the guys Men's after. initiations. Men. You guys. Yes. Just Men. before we get off, we will talk about <laughs> You know what happened at a core woman initiation. Now imagine a man in that circle. Yeah. You get to sit around and witness. You don't have to go into the circle. You just sit there and you watch all of them. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So come join us, please. We'll put the links um, down below. And anyone who registers will reach out to you directly and see which one of us you would like to coach with and when you would like to do that. Um, super excited for a couple of you to join us at this upcoming Nobleman. It is March 5th through the 8th. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Yeah. See you there. Bye.